always knew Ryan was the real, real deal. Ooh. And then seeing him actually do this uh, was amazing. Up here in, in uh, the Six Rivers National Forest and the Marble Mountains and Chastrini and all this kind of stuff, it's, it's the real deal. And as we found out, you can really get lost there and you can really get into serious trouble. To actually see that firsthand was, uh, was eye-opening. One of the big takeaways for me is that even though Ryan was running it, this is one of those things that you can't do by yourself. I have put together a route from Humboldt to Mount Shasta. So 330 miles, um, taking you through three, four service that I am now looking to take on and make an event come 2020. So it's gonna be point A to point B as fast as you can go. Start in Humboldt on the coast, you know, kind of in the redwoods, you'll hit the beach and then start making your way in and then to finish up on Mount Shasta. I mean, for me, it's like this, it's hard to come by those two types of iconic spots that in a few days time period, you'll start and finish at completely different worlds. When he came up with the course and he was like, oh, I'll put on a 330 mile race. I'm like, great, that's gonna be something he puts on, not does. Um, and then from there, it was the discussions and it was about, okay, well, I've got to go check out the course. I've got to go make sure this course exists so that people can run it and I've got to go do it myself, portions of it. And the first thought was, okay, we're gonna, he's gonna go day things and do it. Um, then we made a trip out to Humboldt. So we drove that and on the way back, um, I really was just like, Ryan, I just have this feeling you just need to like quit everything and just go for it. Like take it all, like leave it all behind and just go do the course and document it to show like this whole adventure that you've come up with and the course you've come up with. You told me about this idea for a 330 mile race from the coast all the way to Mount Shasta and my mind just blew up. I mean, I was like, that's awesome. So when I learned that he wanted to go on that run all by himself, and I knew I wanted to be involved, whether it be just to support him or as it was, I went and shot this documentary for him. I don't think as a wife, I'd really on my own be encouraging him to go do 330 miles, but there was something more behind it. Like it was definitely this powerful thing of, you no, know, I think this, that you need to go do this. I think this is the way it's supposed to be. And so I encouraged him in that way and not thinking maybe that he'd really go do it. But from that point on, it just kind of like little step by step doors opening and it's happening. For me, you know, knowing I think I've spent a lot of hours online changing the course through Caltopo on what I think would be, knowing we can't touch the wilderness sections for permits, what I think would be kind of the most epic route that you could take. Um, so, yeah, it's not gonna to come to the point where, okay, time to, time to see if on ground it, it holds true. I was amazed at how detailed he was in putting together this course. He knew where the trails were, he knew where the roads were, supposedly. <laughs> so when it came time to do this, uh, he said he was gonna do it, and he said he was gonna have uh, Eric come along and document it, and that it was gonna be uh, uh, six days and five nights. I was like, I want to go, <laughs> you know, like, I want to go do this um, and photograph it. Having no idea really what we were about to experience. 
we kind of joke that our our view of it's a little skewed that when we think of a marathon now it's like oh no big deal or a 50 mile race big deal that's nothing for you so when 330 came out um i actually did have this moment of like well wait people would actually do that like other than you like i'm like who is it i don't know who these people are but um yeah it's not it doesn't seem as unattainable for ryan it's more like yeah, you can do it. So let's let's get you there. I was diagnosed in 2006 with um, a blood cancer and I had to go through a lot of gnarly treatments. And so he decided he, that he wanted to endure something along with me. Since I've never been just a natural endurance guy. Mm -hmm. It's always had a fight and just mm -hmm. perseverance to it. So just being able to kind of being out there and just grind it out. I now from today got about 60 days of kind of my final push. Um, so physically, you know, just trying to build in as much time on feet and miles as that I can to get ready. Um, really lock in my nutrition, knowing that's gonna come into huge play. And then again, the whole mental state on you know, being, having the grit and the endurance to go through it, but then also not checking out of, you know, my my day-to-day -day family life. Let me show you something. Okay. Look, mom found a stick bug. Look what I did to it. I oh, ate man. it. He's always been a guy that when he makes his mind up to go for it, he goes for it. Yeah, nothing's gonna stop him. So now it's really come to boots on the ground, time for me to go run the thing I created. Like the whole... Oh my God, give me it. All I have to do is that you come down. Right. Mom, can I just get a cooler? I think it's the moment he left that I was kind of like, oh shoot, he's actually doing this. Like he's gone now, he's driving to the coast to go actually do this. Um, there was this moment of like, okay, like I guess this is happening. But I've always encouraged him in it and not tried to be like, okay, this is too much, too crazy. Um, you've gone too far. <laughs> I don't think it really set in yet what was going to transpire over those six days. Um, but yeah, day one was awesome. Had an awesome turnout from Humboldt County. The good thing with going slow is it's not difficult to make. We're driving. It's really inspiring to see uh, the people in Arcata come out at 4.45 in the morning, right? And, and be a part of this. Oh, hey. <laughs> a little stress pace. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's a never ending logistics. It's like an RD slash running combination. This is it, so much uh, planning, so much time's gone into this, and as your friends and fellow runners and uh, people that are just cheering for you, we just wish blessing on you, we wish safety over you. Uh, we ask God that you'd protect Ryan every step of the way, that you fill him with uh, courage and strength and everything he needs to uh, go after this and accomplish his goal. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, bro. Okay. Thank you, man. Amen. Got it. Yeah. It's about 15 or so runners, you know, show up at 4:45 in the morning and run with me. So it was excitement from the get-go. Hi. Hi, Eric. Kind of winds through it. Oh, <laughs> and then there were two. Dun dun dun. So what do you think? Loving it. <laughs> Just a little Friday morning stroll in Humboldt County. <laughs> <Cars>. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Yeah. It's a good, that was a cool little spot. It's a great spot. Yeah. Bunch of ferns. And about, I think, two miles is when we start going up. The views and area that I've never really run in before or visited, um, it, it was cool to see that side of the country. How did you feel about this morning's send off? It was awesome. Um, yeah, my whole hope going into it was hoping that we'd get some community rally to come out and have 15 plus people come out at 5 a.m., 4.45 was, yeah, you couldn't ask for better, better turnout. So that was, that was huge. So thank you to Humboldt. Um, yeah, that meant more than you guys know. That was, that was awesome. All right, okay. Cool, so we'll go to the gate together and then, okay. and then Godspeed to both of us. <laughs> All day! Got a text back, see what it said. He did, I asked if he got across the river and he said he did, so. Got away from the go up that steep, I don't know, I don't know what you call that, ravine? The path was saying that the road would take you over the water and then connect to the bottom of this, but, but it, doesn't. it doesn't. The fuel champions. and aging population. I will say those Pringles were a good ad. Crunchy is always a good thing. All right. All right. So we'll see you at we'll five see miles. See you at five miles and mile 43.6. Well, what you waiting for? <laughs> <laughs> That was a long way down. <laughs> I need five more days, man. Oh, man. Luckily, none of the days will be going this long. 67.3. <sighs> Good, like energy wise is good. It's just, I was trying to like not destroy my quads and it's like such a fine line on going slow, but then fighting gravity. <laughs> yes, <laughs> one hour, four more miles. Yeah, it's good. All right, see you at Bigfoot Motel. So yeah, ran 71 miles day one, made it to Willow Creek. Was very excited to stay in a bed <laughs> at Bigfoot Motel. Um, so definitely as the sun started to come down, knowing I was running to a bed night one um, was a good motivation. That is day one. <laughs> 71.33 miles. And a right pinky that doesn't feel too good. <laughs> Where dreams are made. <laughs> are you feeling pretty good? No delirium. Yeah, no, he head solid. Um, I mean, I, I'd give my head like a, an A minus for the whole day. Um, my legs felt really good. It's just those last couple miles on that downhill coming out of um, mm -hmm. 
before we hit the 299, it just started rubbing my feet. So I like got like three blisters that it feels like popped up. So I'll I'll take care of them tonight. This one. <laughs> Either I'm a wimp or this has some damage. Okay, so no blood. That's good. Day two, that's really when I'd say the untamed factor started to started to come out. That's funny, the blisters are probably like a quarter inch big. Right there on like the worst spot. Jog it out or yeah, I can walk. <laughs> I'm good with walking. Let you guys catch up to me so I'm not too fast. <laughs> Leading up to it, it was just looking at a lot of different map layers on, okay, I'm pretty certain these trails or these roads exist, so I should be good to go. But knowing if there was gonna be any curveballs that came up on you know, what I thought existed didn't exist, that was the section that it was gonna happen. <laughs> and it played out. So when he said he was gonna do this, it really didn't surprise us, but you know, as, as parents, you, you worry. And so, so then when we, when we got the tracker, you know, starting from day one, I couldn't even get any work done. <laughs> and, and I, was, I was on that thing, you know, every, checking every 15 minutes the whole time. And we couldn't sleep at night because we, you know, and especially a couple of those nights when he came in at midnight and everything, well, we couldn't go to bed at 10.30 because we didn't know what the heck was going on, you know? So mm. we had to stay up with him. didn't happen like today feels like day one and I'm just about 11 miles in so that's solid it's really nice knowing I don't have to get into the 70s <laughs> for miles yeah so I figure I just take from now till when I see you guys like conservative and then we'll be golden from there Oh, there's a way through. Tunnel. All right. See you on the other side. Oh. I missed a turn <laughs> um, doing one of the climbs. It was which I assumed the road I was on was just gonna continue, continue for a while. Turned out there was a slight grassy patch that had a tiny, like pretty much a man-sized hole in it um, to go through. So I, I blew by it, ended up doing a five mile kind of rerun. And then hit another section in Hoopa where there's supposed to be a trail that was gonna take me over a creek. Um, so I found it, it was, you know, a little overgrown, but it was definitely a trail, um, it, which, after probably 25 yards turned into just the biggest thorn bush haven. <laughs> so I committed to the thorns for probably about 30, 45 minutes until it ended up just taking me to a cliff down to the, to the creek. So at that point I was like, well, here goes another reroute. So I started to probably get to a low place mentally. Um, this is already getting hot. That was already now my second like mishap for the day. So it was gonna put me now 10 miles over the day. So right now, best case scenario was gonna be a 70 mile day. So as I come out of it, then I hear a car coming and it was kind of barreling down the road and I was like, oh man, I'm so tempted to just ask them to take me to the point where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> I was like, damn, I'm gonna ask this dude if this will take me to the lookout tower. So definitely one of the instant highs that I had on 
thank God I know these people, I can refuel, they can tell me where I was. Obviously now this road connects to where I'm supposed to go, so I now have full certainty. I can now get to the lookout tower I was supposed to meet him at. All day. All day. Shout, shout, let it all out. Yeah, that's going on the internet. So look out your window, because no joke, it was at the edge. And then it saw me and just <laughs> sprinted up. It's pretty good size too. So that's bear three? Bear Counting three. scouting? Yeah, bear three. It uh, clawed me right here. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> Did you up. like a band-aid? I would. A tic-tac? It healed up pretty quickly. Yeah, I know. I've got a bear hug for you if you want, <laughs> hey. want some comfort. I got a bear ass. <laughs> This is a fixer upper. You can go inside it. <laughs> We're going in. It started getting dark. I then had Eric join me um, for the night spot, which was awesome. I've had no like stomach issues. I've been eating solid food all day. My head's good. It's really just, it's, if this tendon thing could go away, then I'm, I'm solid. I think when he told me my, his, his ankle was swollen, it was kind of like, okay, that hesitance, um, it's only day two. <laughs> is this uh, a deal breaker? Is this something that like he needs to pull the plug now? Then Nigel came up um, in the Jeep, so then he was driving behind us, shining the light. Um, and then he started being our DJ and blasting some music. And at that point for me, it was a mental switch on, okay, we're six miles out. I now got Eric running next to me. I got Nigel rocking some music behind us. And we just started clipping off, you know, nine minute miles versus the 12 minute miles that we were doing previously. Yeah. Uh -huh. 69, 69. Day three, baby. 58 miles. Sticking to 58 miles. Keep turning, turn hard. All right, straighten it out. More this way. And just nice and easy. Good job. 
Now let's go hide the car. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, I'm screwed. This one doesn't work. Oh man, bruised banana. That's all you're gonna get from coming <laughs> <know. what> on. <laughs> That ridge line is seriously the best. Beautiful. 13 miles in. Impressive. 4,300 climbing. Heck yeah, man. Yeah, this kind of went away. Uh, really? Yeah. Nice. So, yeah, we're golden, man. So it was only supposed to be about a 10 mile, um, 10 mile trek. So we were like, okay, cool. We'll see you, you know, in three hours, Nigel was gonna do a little drive around, get gas and, and then come to the campground. So we set off, huge climb up to Orleans Lookout Tower. That's where we had our kind of first true shots of Mount Shasta. So from the vantage point, it was cool yet, like, holy hell, I still gotta get away over there. Oh wait, do you hear that? Shout, shout, let it all out. These are the words I can do without. Come, Come on. on, I'm talking to you. Come on. I am very pleased. You can see kind of the three ridges that went over and went down. You could see the trail kind of going up those ridges. So I was like, okay, full certainty, a trail exists that's gonna take us down. It had been years and years, I think, before, since that trail has even been used. Um, there were so many down, dead trees, thorn bushes, poison oak, which I'm wearing today. Um, that six mile stint ended up taking us about 10 hours to, to get through. I mean, that's the first time I've ever really push myself to the point where I thought, maybe I can't do this. Maybe I need to call for emergency services. We were bushwhacking through thorns. You're on the side of the mountain, so you're even just trying to like traverse across it, but it's crazy slippery. At that point, my ankle was already jacked up, so that definitely wasn't the train I wanted to be on. Um, we got stuck at thorn bushes. We fell. Um, we ran out of water because we didn't think even worst case scenario, it was gonna be taking us that long. Um, so the bill started getting super dehydrated and just under caloried. That's where I think the true lows for me started to come out once I was just emotionally and physically exhausted. Um, we got to a place where we're you know, a mile and a half away, but the route we had to go to even go a mile and a half, last mile took an hour and a half <laughs> to go a mile. Um, so I even started mentally contemplating, okay, I know the owner of Mountain Medics, do I need to, <laughs> is now the time where, you know, it's situation's gonna be coming. And about a quarter mile away, maybe a little less, that was where I think I've had my first like emotional <laughs> meltdown. I have a question for you. <laughs> that bad me, man. Oh. That was tough. Uh, we almost wanted search and rescue. Uh, it was that close. Uh, uh, it's like the combination of like disappointed that. Can I sit on the bench? It just derailed it, and that was beyond hard. Uh, uh. I mean, there were deep dark moments for sure. <coughs> and uh, we just had to keep pushing, keep moving forward. And eventually after 10 hours of a lot of suffering, we made it through. Uh, 
So what, you ready? I'm ready. We, uh, we'll see how my left leg does. It's nice and swollen. But yeah, woke up day four and the new spark was back. I was super excited because I, I knew I'd seen a lot of day four ahead of time and knew the views and the climbs and the lookout towers that were ahead. Um, so I was like, okay, I already know I want to run this section so I can see it and experience it. And then when I woke up in the morning, you know, obviously my foot still bothered me, but I could move. So yeah, I was back to kind of, I think my giddy self in the morning, just stoked to kind of, all right, let's go hammer the day and see how it plays out. So are you good for now until the lookout? Let's meet the lookout. Yeah, dude, I'm good, man. It's fun again. <laughs> I can even run. Kicking butt. Shout. <laughs> Shout. Let it all out. All right, all right. Nice, dude. That was good, man. That was fun. Good morning. I'm Barry. I met your wife. Yeah. Last week. Yeah, she said you'd be coming by. Yeah, she said you have a nice little. Look out spot up here. Good view, huh? Yeah, not too bad, man. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Barry up at Eddie Gulch. Um, he's the man. I mean, his passion for the for the forest and for people was very apparent. Um, and he was so excited to see us, what we were doing, and showcasing the area. It was, it was a cool moment. I, I knew waking up day four that I will be in Bunny Flats. Um, even, if, even if it means some more, you know, rolling in at midnight to camp, um, it's, yeah. In my mind, the, the race was done at that point. It was now just getting to experience the, the miles to get there. So got to end of day four. At that point, my left tendon was pretty shot. My right one started flaring up. So where I was excited to do the climbs because it's the sense that hurt me. Um, end of day four, I couldn't really even walk the climbs. All right, your English man of studliness is not here. <laughs> So now we get to freak out about him instead of him freaking out about us. Nigel, where are you? Congrats, man. That's Thank you, man. Pretty epic trip, yeah. Yeah, we got like 25 miles left, I think, until I get to the top of it. Yeah, that's a tough push. I heard you made it up there, but it's a tough yeah, push to the top. It's a tough push to the top. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, I forget her name, but Karen. Karen, yeah. yeah. And you met her husband. And I met her husband this yeah. morning, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, she's been, been kind good. of tracking, so she wanted actually for you to come find to get an update. So oh, she's nice. really looking forward to it. That's awesome. You can spend, guys spending the night out yes, there. Out there. So awesome, man. Nice, well, dude. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I ran the Castle Craig's race. Yeah, I'll tell you. Okay. So uh, I kind of knew you from that. So I, yeah. And then when I saw this advertised, my lookout was all into it. Yeah. She's so stoked for you to make it. So awesome. Yeah. That's so good, man. Yeah. <laughs> all right, man. I'll, like, I'll, is I'll, this road closed or no, what's going on? No, I told him I was going to scare you. <laughs>
That's awesome, All dude. All right, man. Good luck. All right, buddy. Thank yeah. you, man. So it was really neat to be able to you know, meet husband and wife same day, two different lookout towers, miles apart, <laughs> um, that we were running through. One thing that was cool is as we were hitting these lookout towers, Mount Shasta started small and a little bigger and a little bigger, and then at Bunny Flats, it's this huge, glorious 14,000 foot mountain. That's what I need. Right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are live. A bunch of girls. <laughs> I mean, complain, complain, complain. Look at everyone, Nigel's gone English. Run, run, run. Run, run, run. So all you do is run, run, run. <laughs> and then when you can't run, you know, it's like, <laughs> it's the world's fault, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like you thought something bad wasn't gonna happen. I mean, it's just running. <laughs> How hard can it be? Left foot, right foot. Left foot, just right foot. Favor the right foot, mate. <laughs> you know. And what's the other girl doing? <laughs> He's wiping his foot with a hanky. <laughs> <laughs> just to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to bleed all over you. It's just blood. A little bit of blood never hurt anybody. <laughs> Bloody hell. So we picked up day five at Kangaroo Lake. I was pretty good in the morning, like it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to feel. So I was back to being super excited to just get out and hit it, knowing after that night I was on the final stretch. And then hopped on the trail, and then naturally another curveball came. There's supposed to be an old forest logging road that peeled off the trail, and that piece of road did not exist. Um, I contemplated just going up and over the mountain to get where I knew Eric was on the other side, but I'm glad I didn't, because that I probably wouldn't have <laughs> made it over that. And we had seen probably 15 bears by this point. Um, they're awesome to see. I mean, black bears, they're so skittish out in nature that as soon as they see you or you make a sound, they run off. So I was never the whole time scared of seeing a bear. Um, I was more like, cool, how many bears can I see? So I'm going on the road. In front of me then is a, the biggest one that I saw during the trip, just casually walking down the road. So I was like, okay. I was like, all right, well, as soon as it hears me or knows I'm there, it's gonna instantly take off running. I'll just continue along my way. Um, so I, I give a little shout just to get its attention. It looks at me, sits down. I then kind of give another shout and then it just lays down. So I was like, okay, <laughs> that's weird. Um, and then I started just getting in my own head. I was like, well, shoot, does that mean it's got like cubs around that like now it's gonna start getting agitated or I'm gonna go like toe to toe with this bear. But I knew I was not gonna be backtracking by any means. So I just picked up a pretty big rock, hucked it at it, started screaming and waving my, my tracking poles. And then that finally kind of scared it a little bit and the thing took off. And then as soon as it was out of sight, I then picked up my run and kind of ran around that bend to get out of there. Got down and then I, as I came to the turn, I see this car sitting there. I was like, oh, it's kind of a random spot to uh, have a car. This guy gets out, I was like, oh, weird. I feel like I know this, this guy, but I had not made any plans with anyone to meet me at that point. Um, it ended up being this guy, Casey, who I ran um, a 50 mile race out in Sausalito with back in March, um, that he had just been following what we were doing. And he woke up that morning and drove five hours um, and just guesstimated where I would be based off the tracking. Um, and it was, timing couldn't have been better. And we started a very cool section. This was now gonna be the snowy section that I was hoping was still passable, but knew for a lot of it, we probably weren't gonna be able to see the trail because it's all under snow. Um, and then we went from, from Dead Falls, um, kind of through Eddy, down to Lake Siskiyou.
I was like, awesome, we'll be able to get to camp at you know 6, 7 p.m. Actually, for the first time, sit down and have dinner and then just relax. We had a lot of descending, just going through the snow. I could not move fast, and it was the most beautiful trail coming down um, into Lake Siskiyou, but it was the most rocky trail. So for me at that point, any sort of descend and you add rocks to it, and we were not best friends. <laughs> um, so my miles clicking off were very slow. The trail that we had showed crossing a creek, Assumption, I mean, it was a pretty, fast-moving, wide creek. Um, assumption was gonna be a bridge that you'd take over it. it. At that point, it was dark. We had one flashlight we were sharing. Um, and it was just rushing water. There was no bridge. We could see the road on the other side, but then when we looked at our map, at this point, we're exhausted and it's late. I mean, I'm more exhausted. Um, but it was either choosing to climb back up two miles to then go around, which was gonna take me forever, um, or to just link up and charge the water to get to where the other side where that road was. So we linked up and we, <laughs> we forged the water. Yeah, then trudged our way back to camp and had some nice spaghetti dinner waiting for us um, from Tony and his wife. Did the stretch from the lake up to Bunny Flat. Um, so it was awesome. I got to see Bree and my kids. They rolled in that morning, um, which was awesome. I then got us, uh, one of my runners, Cordell, came and showed up. My father-in-law came up to run the last 20 miles with me. So me, Cordell, and my father-in-law took off from the lake. Three, two, one. Woo. You're too fast for me, man. Oh man! He's as fast as a bear! Are you serious? <laughs> I got more in me! Okay, I gotta go. Where are you go. running to? To Bunny Flat. Alright! Yeah. Where'd you start? Arcata. Yeah, I saw you! <laughs> I saw you! You were awesome! Thank you! Yeah. We're hot! Thank you. We're rooting for you. I appreciate that. You need a ride? I know, right? <laughs> You're tempting. Okay. <laughs> Those are for you, Eric. But I have put it on an Astro here, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Started shouting Eric when I when I knew that we had to have been close. So again, the confirmation to hear the voice come back. Come on, Luke. Um, that okay, ah. thank God I didn't just take you know me, Kevin, and Cordell the wrong way or an impassable way. But the ankles now.
I think it is worthy of people taking on to see if they can tame it. It, it def, I mean, it put me through the ringer. Um, so I, I think the pain and suffering that people will endure is worth it. And I'm excited to see people go after it. And now that I know <laughs> what it did to me, um, I'm excited to see, to see them take it on. Would you run it fast? Oh. I'll run it faster than you. Oh man. Challenge accepted. Yeah, I mean, it's just running. How hard can it be? 